Good day, and welcome to the final episode of the Running Injury Prevention Series. Have you been running more lately because the weather's nice, the COVID-19 pandemic is preventing you from going to the gym or large social gatherings, and you find that running is just an easy way to get some extra exercise in? Are you starting to notice some extra aches and pains in your joints, or maybe you're actually getting injured already? Or are you just not running because you're afraid of getting injured? Well, this guide is for you. Today, we've got some tips and tricks on how to create a programming for running, whether you're running because you want to improve your fitness or whether you're running because you actually want to run a road race. These guides are important and take into consideration tips on how to reduce your risk of injury. If you haven't checked out my other videos, there's a video on ankle mobility and stability. There's a video on how to warm up and cool down properly before and after your run. And there's a shoe guide to help you pick the best shoe that's right for you. Before we get started today, my name is Gabriel Quenville, and I'm the reconditioning specialist for the Canadian Armed Forces out here at Base 4 in Cold Lake. And I'm a clinical exercise physiologist certified through the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology. So let's get started talking about how to create a good running program. Did you know that the most amount of injuries caused by fitness and sports related activities within the Canadian Armed Forces is actually caused by running? How can we prevent these running injuries? Well, the first suggestions comes to us from the Advanced Fitness Assessment and Exercise Prescription Book written by Hayward and all. What they recommend is initially, we wanna create an aerobic base, regardless of what activity we're doing. We want our heart to be conditioned to long sustained aerobic activity. How do we know that we've built a sufficient base? Well, we get to a point where we can go three times a week, 30 minutes of continuous aerobic activity where this feels light and our heart rate is at about 60% of our heart rate reserve. For most people, this is going to be about 120 to 140 beats per minute. How do we know that that feels light? Well, you're able to talk the whole time. You're not huffing and puffing. It's a nice, easy, comfortable effort. So let's say you're not there yet. Well, let's gradually get to a place where we can get there. Maybe we're doing an activity that our heart rate isn't as high, 100 to 120 beats per minute, or maybe even less if we're not even there yet. And maybe we're going for about 20 minutes. Let's do that three times a week, and then slowly build it up. Go from 20 to 25, and then go from 25 to 30, and slowly add in the intensity upwards to 140 beats per minute, all while it feeling like a nice, comfortable, and light effort. Once you're there, you're able, your heart is able to start going for longer duration or to start including higher intensity training. Unfortunately for all you runners, it's insufficient to just build a strong aerobic base before we start increasing intensity or increasing duration. What we also need to take into consideration is that running is a high impact modality, meaning that we need to train our body to be highly resilient to absorbing shock every single step that we take. Hayward and all fail to acknowledge this, but fortunately for us, our national PSP health promotion team did take this into consideration. Once you've created your aerobic base, what they recommend is that you maintain that effort three times a week, 30 minutes of continuous effort at 60% of your heart rate reserve where that feels light at a conversational pace, and you do so for two continuous months. If your body is able to do that and remain injury free, at that point, is it safe for you to start increasing your duration and adding in more intensity? By now, some of you are probably sitting there thinking like, who is this guy who thinks that I could even run at my lightest effort and get my heart rate below 140 beats per minute? That's impossible. Well, if that's you, let's work on building our aerobic capacity so that we can get to a place where even the lightest run might feel a little bit easier. Let's pick any modality, whether it's cycling, indoors or outdoors, going to the beach and swimming, and if all else fails and you don't have those options, let's go for a speed walk. Go for a speed walk and build your aerobic base. Go the fastest that you can go where your heart rate is in that zone of 120 to 140 beats per minute and go for 30 minutes. Did that feel hard? Well, keep trying to do that until you get to a place where that feels easy or maybe bring down the intensity a bit and gradually build it up. 
once you've gotten to a place where speed walking 30 minutes, three times a week, 120 to 140 beats per minute of your heart rate feels nice and easy, well then you can start adding duration and you can start adding intensity. Let's start adding intensity by adding a little bit of running in there. Maybe in the middle of our 30 minutes, we're gonna do 10 minutes in the middle where we do a minute of jogging and a minute of speed walking and we alternate that five times. That adds five minutes of running where our joints are getting used to increased um, shock absorption and we're still getting a good quality workout. We can start adding some intensity and some duration slowly while we're continuing to keep our running a total of 30 minutes or less. Once we're at that place where we can jog for 30 minutes, whether it's continuous or not, three times a week, we want to do that for two continuous months in order for joints to get used to the shock absorption. Now let's say you're on the other side of the spectrum and 30 minutes of e easy running is just not enough for you. It doesn't cut it. You're an elite athlete or you're just extremely fit. Well, for you, my recommendation is to use your three runs as a warm up to other activities. So whether you have a gym at home or you can do body weight workouts, get creative and use that 30 minutes as the warm up to a strength and conditioning program that you're gonna do right afterwards. Make sure that you incorporate daily mobility and stability programming. We do post yoga videos every single day on our Facebook group at 11 a.m. As well, we have a workout of the day that you can do. That's about an hour of physical activity, including the warm-up and the cool-down with the workout session that you can do five days a week. It's posted every single day at 7 a.m. on our Facebook group. On top of three runs, three times a week, I'm sure that you can fit more than enough physical activity into your daily training plan. This section is short and sweet. I already made a video on this. Shoes are extremely important and make sure you get the right pair of shoes. If you come home with a trainer or a lifter, you're gonna get injured if you try to run in those. Go check out my shoe running guide, which is linked in the description below if you wanna know which shoe is right for you and how to get the knowledge needed to get the right pair of running shoes. So are you someone who's training for a race or you're training for fitness but you just want more than those 30 minutes three times a week and you've already built your two month base? Well, here are two things that you need to consider when you're starting to add duration and adding intensity into your programming. The first is the 10% rule, which is in relation to duration. You never want to increase your duration by more than 10% each week. And we do that when considering how much time we spent on our feet, not the total distance covered. So if you're doing three times a week, 30 minutes, you're now at 90 minutes a week of running. And the following week, you can safely add nine minutes, which is 10% of that, and go up to 99 minutes the following week. We recommend that you spread those nine minutes among all of your easy runs. So instead of doing 39 minutes, 30 and 30, we recommend you do something like 33, 33, and 33 minutes. Continuing to add 10% each week or less is a safe way to increase your duration nice and gradually. The second recommendation that we have is the 20% rule, and the 20% rule is in relation to your intensity. We recommend that no more than 20% of your weekly mileage should be spent doing any form of running that's higher intensity than light or easy. And remember that light and easy is a conversational pace, so you're jogging and you're able to talk the whole time and you're not huffing and puffing. So let's take week one after those two months of injury-free running as an example. You're currently running 90 minutes in your week, so you can safely incorporate 18 minutes of intensity. So one example would be that your first run is a light 30-minute run. Your second run, including warm-up and cool-down, you do three six minutes of tempo effort. Tempo effort is your one hour threshold pace. And you incorporate two minute easy runs in between those three six minute efforts. Those three six minute efforts are your 18 minutes for the week. And then your last run is another 30 minute easy run. 
you can slowly incorporate and include more running at higher intensity as you start increasing your mileage by 10% every single week. Now, we don't recommend that you always do 10 and 20 every single week. How you can safely and gradually increase your duration is every five to six weeks, let's bring that intensity and duration back down, maybe down five or 10%, and then rebuild from there. So five to six weeks of building, one week down. Five to six weeks of building, one week down. Continue to do that nice and slowly and listen to your body. Maybe you need two weeks down or three weeks down. Maybe 10 and 20 is too aggressive. Maybe you need to do eight and 15. Find something that works for you and play along with it. And if you need more help, reach out to your local PSP staff who can surely help you with this. With that, safe training and have a great day.